Hi, boys and girls. Today we are reading Hansel and Gretel, part one. Our learning objectives for today are to review the elements of fairy tales, retell and identify elements of a fairy tale, demonstrate an understanding of the word comforted, use a graphic organizer to compare characters in several fairy tales, and then identify and describe a heroic character from a fairy tale. Our key vocabulary today are comforted, glittered, and shocked. Comforted is a verb and it means soothed, tried to make someone feel better. Yusuf comforted his sister when she fell off the bike. Glittered is a verb and it means sparkled. Her mother's dress glittered in the light. In this picture, the ocean is glittering. Shocked is a verb and it means surprised. The teacher was shocked by the mess in the classroom at the end of snack time. What's a fairy tale? What are some of the elements of a fairy tale? A fairy tale is a fictional story and it usually starts with once upon a time. And is there magic in fairy tales? Absolutely. And how do fairy tales normally end? Happily ever after. Are there problems and solutions? Yes, there are. So the next fairy tale that we're going to hear is Hansel and Gretel. And it's about a brother and a sister who have a problem that has to be solved. Let's do a little review of some of the fairy tales that we've already talked about and fantasy and reality. So in this picture, is this picture fantasy or reality? It's reality. How about this one? Fantasy or reality? Fantasy. Why is it fantasy? Because there's a fairy, and we can't really have fairies in real life. How about this one? Fantasy or reality? Fantasy. I'm going to take the toy from the cat really quick. Hang on just a minute. Give me that toy. Not for you right now. Okay. This picture was fantasy because she can't really be asleep for 100 years. How about this one? Fantasy, because you can't really spin straw into gold, although that would be really awesome. How about this one? Well, it depends. If the, if the frog is talking, then it's fantasy, because frogs can't really talk. But if it's not talking and it's just looking at her, that could be reality, right? People see frogs outside. What about this picture? This is when they got married. Reality, people get married all the time. Okay, remember our key vocabulary. We have comforted, glittered, and shocked. Listen carefully to find out what problem Hansel and Gretel have and how they try to solve it. Once upon a time, near a deep, dark forest, there lived a poor woodcutter and his wife and two children. The boy was named Hansel and the girl was named Gretel. The family never had very much to eat. And now, when times were hard, people around the land were starving and the poor woodcutter could not get enough food to feed his family. As he lay in bed one night, tossing and turning with worry, he turned to his wife and said, what is going to happen to us? How can we feed our poor children when we haven't got enough for ourselves? Listen to me, said his wife. Early tomorrow morning, the cold-hearted woman said, we'll take the children deep into the woods. We'll give them each a piece of bread and make a fire. Then we'll leave them and go about our work. They won't find their way home in time for dinner, and we'll eat their share. No, said the man. I cannot do that. I cannot leave my children alone in the woods where there are wild animals. It'll get dark and cold as the sun sets. Then you're a fool, 
snapped the woman. You might as well accept it. We're all going to starve. Then she kept at the poor man until at last he agreed. But I feel sorry for my poor children, he said quietly. The two children were so hungry that they had not been able to sleep, and so they heard everything their stepmother said to their father. Gretel cried, but Hansel whispered, Don't worry, I will think of something. And when their parents had gone to sleep, Hansel got up, put on his little coat, and sneaked outside. The moon was shining brightly, and the white pebbles that lay in front of the house glittered like silver coins. Hansel stooped and filled the pocket of his coat with as many pebbles as it would hold. Then he tiptoed back to bed and said to Gretel, Go to sleep, little sister. At daybreak, the woman came and woke the two children. Get up, you lazy bones. We're going to the forest to get some wood. She gave them each a piece of bread and said, That's your food for the day. Don't eat it all at once because it's all you're going to get. We will have supper after we return from the woods. That is, if you're home in time. Do you think that they're going to be home in time? What's your prediction? Let's see if you're correct. Gretel carried both pieces of bread in her apron, for Hansel's pockets were full of pebbles. They all started out on their way to the forest. As they walked, Hansel kept turning and looking back at the house again and again. His father said, Hansel, what are you looking at? You must watch where you're going. Oh, said Hansel, I'm just looking at my little white kitten sitting on the roof of the house to say goodbye. Do you think he's really looking at the kitten? Probably not. The wife said, you little fool, that's not your kitten. It's just the sun shining on the chimney. Now come along. But Hansel stayed a few steps behind and kept turning each time he turned. Uh, he dropped a pebble from his pocket to mark the way. When they were deep in the forest, the father said, Gather some firewood, children. I'll start a fire so you won't get cold while we work. Hansel and Gretel gathered a little mountain of twigs and sticks, and when the fire was burning, the wife said, Stay by the fire, you two. We have to go and cut wood. When we're finished, we'll come back and get you. Are they going to come back? Mm -mm. So Hansel and Gretel sat by the fire. After a time, they ate their bread. And after a longer time, they got so tired that they closed their eyes and fell asleep. When they woke, it was dark, and they were all alone. Gretel began to cry, but Hansel comforted her. Wait a little until the moon rises, he said. When the full moon had risen, Hansel took his little sister by the hand and followed the pebbles, which glittered like silver coins, and showed them the way. What does a full moon look like? It look, it's a whole circle, right? And it's really bright and it lights up the sky and the earth too. So that is what made those pebbles glitter. Okay. They walked through the night and at the last and at last at the break of day they came to their father's house. They knocked on the door and when the woman opened it, she was shocked. But all she said was, why, there you are. Why did you stay so long in the forest? We thought you were never coming home again. Of course, their father was glad to see them, for it had broken his heart to leave them alone. Not very long afterward, times were hard again, and there was little food to eat. Again, the children heard their stepmother say to their father one night, There's nothing left but a half a loaf of bread. After that, we're done. We don't even have enough food for ourselves and the children. This time, we'll take them so deep into the forest that they won't find their way back for a week. But wife, said the man with a heavy heart, it would be better to share our last bite of food with the children. But the wife would not listen to him, and she knew if she kept at him, she could get him to give in and agree with her plan as he did before. Much later, when the parents were asleep, Hansel got up to collect pebbles just as he did before. But he couldn't get out. 
his stepmother had figured out how they found their way home last time and had locked the door. So Hansel got back into bed and tried to think of a different plan. What do you think he's going to do next? Oopsie. Early the next morning, the woman roused the children out of bed. She gave them a piece of bread, even smaller than before. As they walked into the woods, Hansel broke up the bread in his pocket, and every once in a while, he stopped to throw a crumb back on the ground. Hansel, said his father, why do you keep stopping and looking back? I'm looking for a little pigeon that's sitting on the roof that wants to say goodbye to me, answered Hansel. Little fool, said the wife. That's not a pigeon. It's only the sun shining on the chimney. So they walked on, and Hansel dropped breadcrumbs all along the way. The woman led the children deeper into the forest than they had ever been in their all their lives. Again, they gathered sticks for a fire, and the woman said, Sit there, children, and when you, get, when you are tired, go to sleep. We are going to cut wood, and when we're finished, we'll come to get you. Later, when it was lunchtime, Gretel shared her small piece of bread with Hansel because he had left his crumbs, his in crumbs along the path. Then they fell asleep. As evening came, no one came to get them. When they woke, it was dark, and they were alone. When the moon rose, they started for home, but they couldn't find the breadcrumbs. The birds had eaten them up. Come, Gretel, said Hansel. I know we can find our way. But they couldn't. They went on all night and the next day from morning until evening, but they couldn't find their way out of the forest. They were terribly hungry, for they had nothing to eat but a few berries. When they were so tired that they could drag themselves no farther, they lay down under a tree and fell asleep. What do you think is going to happen now? Remember your predictions because... That's all we're reading from this story today, okay? If you need to hop up and get a wiggle break, go ahead and do that, and then come back for our comprehension questions and word work. Okay, what is the setting of our story? Once upon a time in a forest. What were the characters, um, or sorry, who were the characters in this story? The kids, so Hansel and Gretel. The dad, who was a woodcutter, and the wife. Now, are those characters fantasy or real? They're real. How would you describe Hansel, who is the brother? Brave, kind, clever, right? He had to be clever in order to think of those ways to um, find his way back home. And he was kind to his sister because he comforted her. What was the problem that Hansel and Gretel had in the story? Their father and stepmother kept leaving them in the woods. And they had no food to eat and they got lost, right? What does Hansel do when he hears the plan to leave them and to leave him and Gretel in the woods? What did he plan? to leave the pebbles, and then the next time he was leaving, breadcrumbs, okay? And when he used the pebbles, it worked, but when he used the breadcrumbs, it didn't work, because why? The birds ate them, so there was no more trail for them to follow home. How does the stepmother feel when she sees Hansel and Gretel return the first time? She was surprised and she was unhappy. And what about the dad? He was happy to see them, right? So what does the stepmother do the next time she plans to leave him in the woods? What'd she do to Hansel? He locked, or she locked him in the room, right? So he couldn't go out and find pebbles. So... Um, do you think that the woodcutter should have gone along with the stepmother's plan for leaving Hansel and Gretel in the woods when he knew what he was doing was wrong? 
Probably not. He shouldn't have done that. That wasn't very kind. He wasn't being a very good dad, was he? Okay, word work. In the read aloud, you heard, Gretel began to cry, but Hansel comforted her. I want you to say the word comforted. Comforted. Can you say it in a whisper voice? Comforted. Can you clap it out? Comforted. Okay. If you have been comforted, that means that someone has tried to make you feel better when you are sad or upset. Have you ever comforted somebody? What did you do to comfort someone? Okay, I'm going to ask a question, and I want you to think of how you're going to answer the question. And I want you to use the word comforted in your response. Have you ever been comforted by a friend? I know I have been comforted by a friend. Have you ever comforted a friend? I've comforted a friend. Have you ever been comforted by somebody in your family? I've been comforted by somebody in my family. Have you ever comforted somebody in your family? I've comforted somebody in my family. Have you ever been comforted by a teacher? I've been comforted by a teacher. Okay, here we go. So what is a hero? If I say that they're a hero, what does that mean? A hero is a brave and good man or boy, and a heroine is a brave, good, sorry, a brave and good uh, woman or girl. Okay, so someone who is heroic is very brave and daring and good. Someone who is evil is very bad or wicked. So evil is the opposite of heroic. We are going to compare heroic and evil characters in the fairy tales that we've read so far. So let's think about the fairy tales we've heard. Let's start with Sleeping Beauty. Who was one of the heroes in Sleeping Beauty? The fairy who changed the curse from her dying to just sleeping? Um, the prince? Uh, and who were the evil characters? The 13th fairy, right? Um, what about in Rapunzel? Who was a hero? The prince? Rapunzel was kind of a hero too, because remember she helped um, the prince see again and then they went home to the castle. And who was evil? The witch, right? And how about in Rumpelstiltskin? Who was the hero in Rumpelstiltskin? Kind of the, um, the dude who found out what Rumpelstiltskin's name was, right? And who was the evil character in Rumpelstiltskin? Rumpel still skin because he was trying to take her baby. Okay. And then what other story? Oh, the frog prince. Was there a hero in that story? Well, the frog did go into the well and get the ball. So he's kind of a hero that way. And the girl, because she kept her promise and she ended up kissing the frog. She saved the frog from the curse that the witch had put on him. Who was evil in that story? The witch was evil. But also kind of the princess was evil for a little bit, right? She wasn't very nice to the frog at first. But then she, then she was nice. Okay. And Hansel and Gretel. Who was a hero? Hansel, right? Because he helped his sister get home. And who was kind of evil? The stepmom. Okay. Okay. So we reviewed the elements of fairy tales. We were able to retell and identify elements of a fairy tale. 
We demonstrated a word, an understanding of the word comforted. We used a graphic organizer to compare the characters in several fairy tales. So we didn't actually use the graphic organizer. This is the graphic organizer. So if we had answered the questions for like who was hero and who was evil, we would have put the heroes on this side and the people who were evil on this side. Okay. Um, and then we were able to identify and describe heroic characters from fairy tales. Okay. Awesome job. See you next time.